Hello, I'm an old guy and I do maths. Today we're looking at um, the inverse of this function. Um, now, this is a familiar function. Uh, y equals x squared. Very quick artist's impression in the top corner. That's what it looks like. Um, so there are um, there are a couple of ways of um, of doing this. Um, we could graph the thing and reflect it in the line y equals x, and I will do that uh, towards the end of the video. Um, and from there, we could possibly work out what it what it um, what the inverse of this looks like. Um, but let's not do that. Let's do it um, the the traditional way, which is that we swap x and y, and then we make um, we make y the subject, which is we make y equal whatever whatever this comes to. Um, this is not particularly hard. Um, so the question is, how do we get rid of this? How do we make y on its own equal something? Well, the answer is that we take the square root of both sides. And um, this is what you wind up with. Now, when I was at school in the Stone Age, we just accepted that when we did this, that this was positive and negative root x. But um, I'll just put that there for uh, the sake of... Um, not confusing anyone. Okay, so that was over very quickly. That's all there. That's all there is to it. So the the inverse of this function is y equals plus or minus root x. And um, what is that? What is that graph like? Well, um, let's let's do this. So here's our original function y equals y equals x squared and the new the new graph looks like this um, and it is indeed a reflection in this line y equals x y equals x and so this point for instance has been moved to here this point has been moved to here um, this point has been moved over to here and so forth. Now there's um, there sorry there I'll get that back into focus. I was saying this point has been moved to here. Sorry you couldn't see that. Um, now there is something else to note about this. In this form, this thing here is not a function. It's what's called a relation and the reason for that is that if I draw a vertical line through here, I hit one point on the x-axis, but I hit two values here. And a function should only give me one value per uh, val one value of y per value of the uh, the x uh, axis. So this thing is a relation. This thing is a function. And what some people do is they, in order to to for this to meet the definition of a function, they um, they just make this positive root x. Um, so no big deal. Um, so I'm going to map just a couple of points so that you can see how this works. So we'll take the we'll take the point four here on the x-axis and um, nine here because these are easy. So y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 4. So that's that point there and that point there. And so this is 4, 2. And this is 4, negative 2. Now, if we were to do this on this function, we would have 2, 4 and negative 2, 4. So what you, what you see is, which is typical of an inverse, is that the points have swapped position. So um, what what was um, what was um, 
2, uh, 2, 4 has become uh, 4, negative 2. So they've done quite a bit, quite a bit more than, than just swap position. Some other things have happened. But generally you map, um, you map x onto y and y onto, y onto x. Um, let's get this other point, 9. So that will be, the square root of 9 is 3. So this point here is 9, 3. And this point down here is 9, negative 3. So you can see, you can see the, the, the attraction of just dealing with this. Um, and in fact, one of the functions that you will see at high school is y equals positive root x or y equals negative root x. Anyway, I don't want to go on for, for too, too much longer. The basic idea of this was to show you how to find the inverse of y equals x squared. We've done that. It was a very simple process and we've mapped it onto we've mapped it onto a graph so thanks very much for watching i hope you found this useful see you next time